Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. Uh, this is a malfunction here in New Zealand. Wonderful Anzac Day here. We're celebrating our vet Veterans Day here in New Zealand. And um, from America, we have uh, over the internet, the w wonderful thing of having digital media and the uh, amazingness of being in this um, in this uh, generation where you can just get on the internet and start talking to people. And here we go with Russ per Perizic. Perizic, correct. Russ Perizic. Uh, Co uh, co writer on uh, co co creator as well, or just co writer? Uh, listed as co writer, but co creator fits as well. On um, Collapse, uh, the one of the latest uh, projects on Indiegogo uh, that's come through, where the first six issues of these comic books are going to be turned in, um, to a graphic novel. So, uh, if you guys want something solid to read. Uh, Check it out. Um, you go on to uh, risingcomics.com and you'll be able to see it there uh, digitally as well. So you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to leave your house. Just jump online and read, you know, download the um, digital version. Russ, tell us about yourself and tell us um, about how you got into comics. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm a writer and editor from Southern California. I actually originally grew up, for anybody who's familiar with America, uh, I grew up in the Midwest in a state called Michigan, which... I didn't quite enjoy very much, but um, I I got into comics because I've always loved it since I was a kid. I kind of, like most people, when you're in your teens, you kind of grow out of it for a while, but I always came back, and yeah. for a while, I did uh, gaming journalism, so okay. I would write reviews and playthroughs and demos of video games, and mm. I got to a point where one of the writers I worked with said, like, hey, I know this comic book company who said... They'll send review copies along if you ever want to read them. And I kind of started the entire comic book like side of that entire website. And it got me back into comics and made me want to start writing again because I'd always been a creative writer as a kid. Yeah. And so I eventually had my own story. And I, I self-funded it like a lot of aspiring comic book people do. I wrote a script and... Paid a very talented artist to kind of do a proof of concept. It this book looks much better. No disrespect to the artist who I worked with before; he's phenomenal, and I would recommend him for everybody. But once I got that done, I was like, "Hey, I, I proved that I can do this," and I started up speaking with other companies who had posted on forums and asked mm -hmm. for help and stuff like that. And I got really lucky because Rising Sun accepted me right off the bat. I showed them my I showed them what I did and they're like, Okay, we have a couple things we want you to test for and I one of them was collapsed. Yeah. So how did you um go about uh like I mean working with someone else uh and co writing something, you know, like collapse, how did you find it, you know, um having the working with someone on a project where, you know, when you usually when you do comic books it's just the writer, the artist and somebody else you know, doing the lettering and stuff, but actually co-writing, what was that like? Uh, it's actually very interesting because when I got told that I was going to write Collapse, they didn't tell me until after I got the job that I was going to have a co-writer. Okay. Which was surprising, and I kind of thought it could go, you know, it could go one of two ways. Either we're going to hate each other and one of us is going to stop writing the book, yeah, or it's going to be great, and thankfully... Uh, my co-writer, R.P. Foster, is a wonderful guy who mm. I am thrilled to work with on a, on a regular basis. And so the way that he and I kind of did it is we went fully collaborative. Uh, we would outline together. We would see, kind of, we would do, um, we kind of switch off on scenes. So if we outlined the book, we had like four or five scenes that we were going to do for the issue. I would write one, he would write one, and then we'd go back over it and edit one another before to kind of give the scene that both of our voices to make sure that, you know, both of us were heard in the story until we were both satisfied before we'd even send it off to editorials. And we did that for the entire series that we worked on. So um, you guys have just fi uh, finished the first arc and um, you did an Indiegogo project. How did you find that, putting that together? Um, I found the Kickstarter a little 
it was a little challenging and like very it was intimidating for me because this was my first published project that was something I wrote. I've done some editing work before where I kind of got I got that that credit where you know I was definitely part of the team, but you know it wasn't my it wasn't my words. And so putting that out there for everyone to see and to support was intimidating because it was just hoping that people wanted to support it. And thankfully they did. And we were successful in our, in our campaign. And I'm very excited for people to see, because I know people have been reading singles as they come along and those are, those are wonderful, but seeing it all together, which is the big point of, of doing the campaign was to show off the paperback that we made of the first six issues. And that, yeah. that was really something to see. I have a copy at home that it's just beautiful. Yeah, trade paperbacks are interesting uh, because you can always put extra extra uh, stuff in the back, which, which is what I love about it. You know, I like, you know, I, I'll usually, if I love something enough, I will go out of my way to buy the trade paperback so that I can find extra pieces of material. Some of them, some of them they cheap out and they don't put it in there. But I, I'm I'm the kind of person who goes, okay, you know, get me some more, get me some special artwork and stuff in the back, you know, show show off what else that you were planning, uh, some extra pieces and stuff. Is that something that's included in this trade paperback, or is it just the six issues? No, we've done we've done some inclusions. Uh, I mean, I it's been a while since I've taken a look at it. I'll be honest, mm. but I know that we've got all the original covers without the the logos. In, uh, separate each issue we've shared some concept art of course a thank you page and mm-hmm. some notes from everyone on the team to, to thank everybody for supporting the book and we've even show off a a special surprise for the for the next arc we have a it's just a teaser image but it shows mm-hmm. off the a main character for our next arc that I'm very excited about it. He was probably my favorite character to write for the whole book, which probably says a lot more about me than I'm willing to admit because he's one of the main antagonists of the book. Tell us about the actual uh, the story of Collapse. So the story of Collapse is that uh, we don't really have a year set, but like 20 years prior to the time that the book takes place, something akin to a third world war happened where mm-hmm. instead of just a nuclear attack, there was some kind of biological attack as well that mutated anyone who managed to survive the initial, the, the initial onslaught. Mm-hmm. So many people took to taking shelter in bunkers and source, source of shelters to protect themselves and it focuses on this group in a small science facility in Idaho. Yep. Those are, those are some of them right there. We, Mm. some of our main cast and it's, it's about this small group who has basically hidden in place for quite a while growing up together as this very small tight knit community under underground to protect themselves from whatever this is. Mm. And the story of them not being able to do that anymore because certain circumstances come to the head and they are forced to leave this place that many of them have only known for their entire life. Yeah. So, I mean, it's quite an interesting concept. I mean, there, there are many stories like that, but I mean, what makes this story exciting for you as a writer? Um, the exciting thing for me was that we, we do call them mutants, which I think is kind of a loaded term. Mm. Both because of its affiliation with like the Marvel books, yeah. and also because that can be seen as some sort of insult. But mm. for me, the people with mutations in the story. Well, I mean, like, look, um, mutants have been around for a while. <laughs> you know, yeah, with no. 2000, 2000 AD, there's there's a whole whole friggin' um, society of mutants in the two thousand AD, AD uh, universe. So I don't think it's could anyway be an insult because I mean mutation, you know, uh, genetic mutation or I don't know. It, 
things happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like the virus, the, uh, the virus we're having right now could easily mutate into something else. And even we've been discussing online with uh, one of the guys I'm going to be interviewing to this afternoon, how he, you know viruses tend to mutate. So uh, in, in collapse, is it a is it a viral thing? Is it an alien thing? Or is it some sort of disease? Um, it is a byproduct of a biological attack. So um, the way we kind of have it, and it's, it's it's interesting that you mentioned like kind of things just happen because that's the way that we kind of treat it where yeah. these are people. They're not some kind of weird secondary species. They people who have been through something both horrific mm. and potentially like exceptional. Like, yeah. and all, all of ours are very intentionally based in nature. So it's right. stuff that could, could have been like almost like a biological like merging. Right. So you know, we have characters who have lizard like skin or, you know, horns like a rhinoceros or something like that. So everything was carefully decided to be like that because we wanted these people to be seen exactly as that. We wanted them to be seen as mm. people and not just unnatural beings that have that should be shunned or feared even though you know that's the the reaction that can't be can happen and i think i don't think that was what we intended at first like when we first took on this story that wasn't the overarching theme of our book but as soon mm -hmm. as we started writing it i think that became very obvious that's what we wanted to talk about right like, just because you're different doesn't mean you're wrong exactly so and, i mean so, there is this um so there's this little, uh, what is it, crosshairs thing here. So you're talking about the rhinoceros uh, horn. Is this what you were talking about? Um, I think that's more insectoid, but what? stuff like that. Yeah. So it look, it looks like a person. It kind of looks like the fly. If you you know if anybody's familiar with like the film. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. So they have you know, they, they're humanoid, but they have some additional qualities that do some different things. And everybody's a little different. Everybody's unique, and yep. that that became something that became very intentional for us as we mm -hmm. continued on with the story. So, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I had a good thought there, and then it just le left my brain. Um, so it's nothing alien, right? So it's basically all grounded on Earth. It's a bi biological thing, as you're saying, um, with a uh, with um vegetables and um insects and so I, I like i like where this is going where it's totally different to what we're seeing and i think right now with with our pandemic it you know it's a good good escapism read and i think um if you guys are interested you can um go on to risingsoncomics.com and of course you can't get it physically right now but you can order it physical for physical um subscription but you can also you know go through uh, Kindle, um, Amazon Kindle through the website and go to drive through and you'll be able to get this. It's called Collapse Isolation. This is the first story out of four. Uh, and so I'm, I'm quite looking for, for it to finish because I know that you've got one trade paperback that's about to come out because it was funded by uh, Kickstarter, which is amazing because it's already pre-sold. And this is a cool thing about uh, indie comics right now is the this burgeoning of a new industry that we haven't seen before but has taken off in the last 10 years where you don't have to go to a uh a multi-billion dollar industry and try to get through the door whereas you can just do your own thing with a group of people go online or join up to somebody like rising sun comics and crowdfund a book that you believe in so i mean the artwork in this is amazing i'm hoping to um interview um i think it's pablo lordi sometime and talk about his artwork. Uh, what was it that made you guys decide to who, you know, go about designing the characters on these things? Because I mean, of course, they look very. This is like a PPE. You know, everybody is familiar now what a PPE is. We, you know, I didn't even know what a PPP, PPE was until this pandemic. You know, oh, I just knew it was a protective gear that you wore. Uh, I've got I've got family members who are nurses, and uh, you know, and um, 
So I understood what that was because of Outbreak, the movies like that. But I didn't know what it was called. But this is a PPE, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we, it's, a, it's a term that I think in, in a sort of term that we use from other media where it's called like a hazmat suit. Yeah. It's a, like a sealed suit that uh, blocks any incoming toxins or, you know, pathogens or anything like that, which mm. is thankfully you know, been very helpful for many people during this entire pandemic. Thankfully, there's, you know, not quite enough to go around, but at least it's helping some. Yeah. So tell us about the design. I mean, like, you've got some amazing design work on the characters here. So is it something that you guys decide beforehand what the characters were going to look like? Uh, like we're talking about the mutants and um, the mutated um, humans. Did you uh, sit down with Pablo and go, uh, you know, talk to Pablo over the internet and go, hey, this is how we want to look, give him some sketches? Or was it that, you know, he described it and he came up with it? Uh, it was more of the latter, I would say. Like, when we wrote the script, we had some ideas of what we wanted the, the abilities to be. Yeah. And we kind of went, we, we went to Pablo and said, you know, we wanted somebody with, who could fly. So, you know, they should have a set of wings. And, we didn't really say much more than that. I, I personally subscribe to the comic book writing method that tell the artist what's happening and let them kind of just do yeah. their own thing and trust that it's going to be good because they're talented. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to not micromanage as hard as yeah. I, I fight my own urge to micromanage because I, I have my own vision, but I want to share that vision with others. So a lot of it was telling Pablo, you know, this guy looks like this, or this is his, the thing he can do with this mutation. So mm -hmm. maybe try something like this or do whatever you want. Here's my suggestion. You feel free to ignore me yeah. because I trust what you can do. So, so most of that credit goes to Pablo. So did you find it hard, um, like, um, how did you guys work with them? Like, did you guys, is it across the internet? Uh, did you, do you know him, or were you able to just uh, you know talk talk him through the process to each other, you know, like we're doing right now? Uh, mostly, it was through stuff similar stuff to this. We would meet regularly uh, via Skype and programs like that. Send you know messages back and forth, and thankfully, we had a good process in in place where Pablo would do kind of stick figure thumbnails yeah, for each of the pages. And then just to kind of give us a basis of like, here's what I'm thinking for this page. Here's some placement. Here's some character mm -hmm. stuff. We did a pretty robust concept art phase before we even got started of some of the characters, maybe like what these characters could look like yeah, so that we could make any adjustments we wanted before we even really started developing the visual style. And then after that, it was, just letting Pablo go wild and making any adjustments necessary uh, as he went, which thankfully there weren't many because he's a very good artist. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the details in these are just amazing. I just love, you know, like I said, I love the covers, but I mean, of course, you know, the artwork inside doesn't betray the covers. You know, like sometimes you pick up a cover and you go, well, that doesn't look like what I was expecting. You know, inside it's like really not not the you know it's like especially when you have somebody else do the artwork inside and somebody else does the cover so you do yeah. you know you get a specialist guy to come and do the cover to sell the artwork uh to sell the comic but having someone to do the artwork as well as the covers is really um is a really good thing but the other things did you guys um ask them to do the covers as well or did he want to do the covers I think it was a little bit of both. I think he was very happy to do them, and we very much wanted him to do them, so it kind of yeah. just worked out well. I yeah, like the I'm idea sure. of the cover art being similar to the interiors because if you're buying a book based on the visual, which mm. when you're when you're unknown, a lot of it's this book looks cool and it's pretty, yeah. So I'm going to check it out, and yeah. and so if it looks pretty and then you open it up and it's nowhere near what it looked like on the cover. You're less likely to read it. Yeah. 
So, um, so you guys got four more story arcs to go. Um, how far have you got on the writing so far? Um, that's kind of the fun thing is that Richard or RP Foster and I were so excited about this project and that we outlined the whole series pretty much immediately. And we actually have the whole story written. Like we have scripts done up until okay. 24. We have every, we know every character, the fate of every character, mm. how the story progresses from beginning to end. And we, we're just waiting on being able to show everybody else what we've come up with. But yeah. we've got a really good team that's been somehow bringing our words to life, which has been very, very cool. It is cool, isn't it? Like actually finally seeing something that you thought of in your head and you've been writing down on paper and now it's actually fleshed out. Um, so wh where do you think this, you, um, would you like to take this? I mean, like after this is like all, all done and dusted, you've got your full graphic novels done. Um, what other, ide other ideas have you got? Are you going to move on to another story or are you just going to stay in this world and keep working on, like, you know, think about The Walking Dead, right? Then they go do the other, I don't even know what it's called, but it's, it's got a Kiwi guy in it from New Zealand, Cliff Curtis. Um, I can't remember. The new, the new one where he goes off to another, there's another city and there's all the, you know. Uh, so is that something that you guys are going to do with the story arc? Once this is done and dusted, you're going to make another, um, you know, another place, another group um, of people? We've thought about that. Um, we don't have any definitive plans just yet. Um, RP Foster and I are kicking around some other ideas. Mm. It was nice because our relationship has been so good as a writing team that as soon as we finish this project, like our, our portion of it, we immediately started, we, we kind of looked at each other and went, okay, now what are we, are, what are we going to do together next? So we've been so kind of moving some ideas around. Like there's nothing too definitive as of yet that I can really talk yeah. about. Um, I do have another book in development at Rising Sun that is my own property that mm. It's it's still definitely in the early phases, but we're we're getting sure. some work done on it, and we'll hopefully have something to show for it soon. That I've been trying to actually, it's kind of ironic. It's coming full circle that the current series, other series I'm working on for Rising Sun, is the, based in the universe that gave me my first gig at Rising Sun. That got me writing Collapse. Excellent. All right. Um, in finishing, uh, do you have any tips for writers who are trying to you know how to get started or anything like that? Um, I think the best thing for that worked for me was one really delving into the medium. So read a lot of comics, find out what you like about the medium, and then don't worry so much about formatting. That can get cleaned up later, but maybe look into seeing how they format. Because every writer does things a little bit differently. I've seen millions of different script styles. So don't worry too much about that. The biggest thing is just do it. A lot of comic, a lot of, a lot of comic pros will tell you the same thing, and I barely consider myself a professional, but they'll say the same thing, which is if you want to be in comic, make comic. However you want to do it, if you have to draw it yourself and it's stick figure drawings, that's yeah. cool. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, got, I'm, I'm a terrible got, artist. You've got red. I, versus, I think is it red versus blue? Uh, red versus green, yeah. Red versus green. So, I mean, that's, that does really well, and it's just boxes. And, yeah. you know, so it doesn't – yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter if you can't draw or something, but as long as – I guess if your story ideas works and people are interested, there is – you know, there's an audience for it. And I think you guys did a great job with this book. I'm really excited with this book. I think it's just a great quality book, great quality art, and um, I can't wait to get my graphic novel. So, yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're very I'm excited to, ready to get more. And I, I will say as a final plug for the, for the series, if you go to risingsuncomics.com right now, you can also pre-order issue seven, the beginning of the next arc. Excellent. All right, guys. Um, um, sorry, carry on. Sorry, which is um, we've actually um, changed artists. Pablo Lordi will, um, is no longer on the book. Who He's still amazing and we love him. But um, we've actually... Got Robbie Bragdon, um, an artist from North Carolina, working on the next arc, and his work is also just phenomenal. And Excellent. I'm excited for everyone to see 
where we're going next. So he's on number seven. Yeah, he's on number seven, and uh, we'll you should be doing everything from seven to twelve. Excellent. Which is so that's, second arc. So that's two. That will complete your two story arcs, and you got two more to go after that. So, guys, if you're just joining us, this is um, Russ Perosic, and he's he's a co-writer on um, Collapse Isolation. They have 24 issues uh, as part of the series. They've just released a gra um, graphic novel of the first volume. Uh, you can get um, get that through um, the PDF if you're not able to get the trade paperback right now through risingsuncomics.com. Check out the store there. And also you can go through and get the single issues on digital as well. So you don't have to worry about, you know, get, um, having to go out to the comic shop or posties or anything like that at the moment. But, of course, they'll be in the comic shops later on once they open up. But in the meantime, get online and uh, read some good comic books. This is called Isolate. Um, isolation and it's collapse the series and as you can see amazing um story about an out um an outbreak of a biological weapon uh with people being after 20 years coming out to see what's going on in the world so like it's kind of like a pandemic i guess and so it's a good thing to read right now but Really, a, a good escapism and great character um, artwork, and looks and just looks amazing. And I can't, you know, the artist on here is the same artist on the inner, inside uh, work as well. So, thank you, Russ. Uh, good seeing you. Stay safe wherever you are. You're in where? Uh, you said you were from Michigan, but where are you now? Um, I'm in Southern California. Southern California. All right. Pretty crazy in California at the moment. So. Hopefully you're keeping safe there and um, hopefully everything's okay and you got everything you need to get through this lockdown and all the best and yeah, all the best for the next story arc and hopefully we get the next trade paper back soon. Yeah. Thank you so much all for right. having me. It was awesome. great talking to you. All good. Thank you, brother. Uh, all right, guys. We'll catch you in the next round this afternoon. I have a economics uh, interview about the future of finance in our country and in the world after the pandemic and lockdown. And also an artist, um, well, uh, world-class airbrush artist and teacher as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Russ, for hanging out um, and actually coming in early instead of the weekend for you guys. I mean, it's our Saturday, but it's your, still your Friday there. Thank you yeah. for that. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you for, for inviting me on. Cheers. Get to you later, brother. Take care.